A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw an angel come up from the east, holding the seal of the living God, cried out in a loud voice to the four angels who were given power to damage the land and the sea. Do not damage the land or the sea or the trees until we put the seal on the forehead of the servants of our God. I heard the number of those who had been marked with the seal, 144,000 marked from every tribe of the children of Israel. After this, I had a vision of a great multitude which no one could count from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. He cried out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God who is seated on the throne and from the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They prostrated themselves before the throne, worshipped God, and exclaimed, Amen, blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power and might, be to our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders spoke up and said to me, Who are these wearing white robes and where did they come from? I said to him, My Lord, you are the one who knows. He said to me, These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Verbum Domini. Lord, this is the people that belongs to see your face. The lords of the earth in its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it, he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord, who may stand in his holy place, one whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain, shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior, such as the race that seeks him, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called children of God, yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do not know that we do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope based on him makes himself pure as he is pure. Verbum Domini. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest, says the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Dominos Verbiscum. Benedict. Lexio Sancte Evangelii Segunda Matteo. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him and began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who are mourned, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. Verbum Domini. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm Father Stephen Abarato of ProtestChildKilling.com, ProtestChildKilling.com, but also of Our Lady of America.com, Our Lady of America.com, and I want to welcome everybody from Our Lady of America.com, devotees, devotion of Our Lady of America to this Mass, its first Wednesday. 
First and foremost, it's all saints, the great solemnity of the church. We'll talk about that. But it's also First Wednesday where we uh, honor the pure heart of St. Joseph. Right, St. Joseph, uh, my patron saint, I was born on the Feast of St. Joseph. We see Our Lady of America there with St. Joseph, right, next there, right? Uh, uh, a reminder, I have the uh, St. Joseph Terror of Demons, uh, a little uh, plaque on the wall there. Of course, you see Our Lady of America over my shoulder. So, I have a great devotion to Our Lady of America, great devotion to St. Joseph, my patron saint, uh, my patron day, March 19th. Uh, and so, first Wednesdays, we honor St. Joseph, and we celebrate Mass for the intentions, well, the devotees of Our Lady of America. So check out OurLadyOfAmerica.com, where you can get the statue, you can get the image, get the diary. All right, so, so important. And we're reminded of this day in the second reading, right, uh, where Paul, I'm sorry, St. John tells us, Everyone who has this hope based on him, right, based on Jesus Christ, makes himself pure as he is pure. Right? So St. John reminds us of the purity that we are called to obtain in our lives by knowing Jesus. And no one knew Jesus apart from the Blessed Virgin Mary as well as St. Joseph. Right? I, I remind everybody, you know, last night the vigil of all Eve, all saints today, the vigil of all saints today, all saints tomorrow, all souls. This is a period of great grace, great intercessory grace for the entire communion of saints. From the church triumphant, who we honor today, for the souls in purgatory, the church suffering, who we honor tomorrow, and uh, the intercession of, of uh, the saints, uh, for the souls in purgatory, uh, and also for all of us, the church militant, right, who are in this battle between good and evil. And so this is a day of great intercessory graces, a period of great intercessory graces. Invoke the saints, invoke their intercessory graces, because there is great need in the world now. Not just this, 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 the, uh, um, Evil that is happening in the Middle East, right, uh, with uh, uh, terroristic Islam trying to destroy Israel. Uh, uh, Islam, who is really the Islamist, uh, Islam uh, it w wants to destroy the world, the non Islamic world, as if what? They are the holy people. They are the holy people. There is no holiness in Islam. There is no good in Islam. That's not to say there's not good people within Islam. All right? Don't, don't, don't uh, 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 mix up my words. But the religion, the teachings, the faith that we have seen for 1,400 years is the evil one's faith. It is evil. It's an evil religion. It's an evil belief. An evil that wants to dominate the world and kill everyone who's not Muslim. This has been evident. It's been evident. And of course our ancestors, the Jews, are the primary focus they are the beginning, the hatred of the Jews in Islam, the hatred of Christians in Islam. This is a man-made religion founded by a pedophile, a warrior, an evil man who slaughtered people and all of his followers slaughtered people for 1,400 years. And somehow we're going to decide whether we are on the side of Israel Versus, if you're not on the side of Israel in this, you are on the side of evil. You're on the side of Islam. Oh, Father, the poor Palestinian people. The poor Palestinian people, to the extent that they're Muslim, may they be enlightened. May their eyes be open. May their ears be open. May their hearts be open. But to the extent that they're victims, they're victims of Islam. 
of Islam, not Judaism, not Israel, not the Jews. So enough of that. This evil is, is, is happening in the world right now. In Ukraine and Russia, evil. There's no good, good, good guys in that conflict. Zelensky's a thug, anti-Christian thug. Putin is a thug, a murderer, an evil man. And, and somehow people want to take sides there? Who, whose side are you going to be on? They're both thugs. Of course, our president is a thug. The president is an anti-Catholic Catholic. You know that Joe Biden... Joe Biden took Kuthis, a terroristic group. So you have, they love the, name, the, the, the letter H, I guess, right? Hamas, Hezbollah, and Houthis. Houthis is a Yemen terrorist group. And Joe Biden very conveniently took off the terrorist list in, 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 in 2021. They have now declared war on Israel. They want to annihilate Israel. All the Muslims want to annihilate Israel. The Arab world wants to annihilate Israel. What, what person in their right mind is going to support a mindset, an ideology, a religion that wants to annihilate off the face of the earth another people's? So you have the Middle East. You have... Uh, uh, Eastern Europe. And then you have the division within the church. The haters of the Pope. The haters of Vatican Council too. The haters of the ordinary form of the Mass. This Mass. People say, well, Father, you take it personally. Yeah, I do take it personal. Because if you hate the Mass that I celebrate in Parsana Christi, the mass of my priesthood, then you hate me. Can't separate a priest from his mass. But this is the war that's going on within our Catholic Church. The war, so there's a war going on within our Catholic Church, a war going on within Christianity, a war going on uh, spiritually throughout the world. Battle between good and evil. Right? And of course, who, who are the real victims of all this? The babies, the pre-born babies, who every single time something else pops up in the world, the babies are pushed further and further down the rabbit hole. The babies who, from, for 30 years of my life, I, I've defended, tried to abolish, can't get the, the, the pro-life movement even in consideration to the uh, utmost dignity of the pre-born the abolition of abortion through constitutional person from the moment of conception because they're so steeped in money, in mammon. Am I a little stressed? Am I a little tense? Well, when I, when I preach this stuff, when I have to confront this stuff, yes. When I'm on the beach doing my prayers, early in the morning when I'm doing my prayers, and I pray for hours Hours every day for the Middle East, for Christianity, for Catholicism, for the Pope, for the divisions amongst Christianity within Catholicism. For hours. Are we blessed? Are we blessed? Are, are we, I, I, I tell you, in the first reading, are we one of those... They've washed our robes, made white in the blood of the Lamb. Are we? We all think we are. We all think we are. Am I? I have no idea. I am surely struggling to be one of those. But I will never assume that I am. I'm still in this battle between good and evil. And I'm not sure I prevailed yet. But there are people who say, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm saved, I'm saved. I'm washed in the blood of the Lamb. We hear this all the time. Right? I'm washed in the blood of the Lamb as, as Christians bash Catholics. Oh, they're not washed in the blood of the Lamb, but I am. Well, they're in for a rude awakening.
Because until we persevere to the end, we don't know whether we'll wear the crown or not. The saints, are we blessed? Are we blessed? I will tell you, in the, in the midst of all the fighting, in the midst of all the argument, I will tell you that we're missing the important thing. And that's the Beatitudes. Are we poor in spirit? Are we pure of heart? I will tell you the problems in the church today are heart problems. Heart problems. They're not ecclesiastical problems. They're not liturgical problems. They're not doctrinal problems. They're not pastoral problems. They're heart problems. Heart problems. That's what's wrong in the church today. That's what's wrong in Christianity today. That's what's wrong in the world today. Heart problems. That's what we need to reflect on. Blessed are those who mourn. I mourn the Palestinians. I mourn the poor Jews that get massacred. I, I mourn the... How, how, to what extent do we mourn? 200,000 babies get mass murdered every day. We take it like a grain of salt. No, 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 you know, no big deal. I mean, I, I'm telling you, if, if, we, if we died tomorrow, or Jesus came tomorrow, he'd show us the, 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 the genocide, the slaughter of the preborn from horizon to horizon, sunrise to sunset. And I'll say, did you mourn these? Oh, yes, Lord, I mourn them. How did you mourn them? How did you mourn them? Great reflection. We hunger and thirst for righteousness. Yeah, we hunger and thirst for self-righteousness. That's what we hunger and thirst for. We're in a competition for holiest than thou. Holiest than thou. Boy, we're holier than thou, and someday I'll be holiest than thou. Man, that's not being pure of heart and poor in spirit. Are we persecuted for our faith? Really, are we? I don't see anyone laying down their lives for their faith. Not voluntarily, and 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 we're we're surely not cognizant of Christians that are being murdered all over the world for their faith. There's no rejoicing and be glad. I used to say this to my seminary and friends all, all together, you know, if we're not if we're not insulted because of our faith. We're not persecuted for our faith. We're not spreading evil about us because of our faith. We have no reason to rejoice and be glad. We have no idea the reward we're going to have in heaven. We have no idea. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, this is a great day of grace. Great day of grace. A day to rejoice in the fact that we can embrace the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But it's a day in which we need to reflect. Last night, today, tomorrow, a period of time to reflect this entire month on our mortality. St. Joseph, give us the grace of a happy death, right? Let us suffer now to our purgatory now. So we may have the grace of a happy death. Amen, St. Joseph. Our Lady of America, intercede for us. All you saints, intercede for us.